everybody and welcome back to Rain and Pours. I am Mitch and today I am pouring a set of custom coasters for a client of mine. So uh, if you've seen the video on how I made my cafe tables for the cafe that I own, uh, the client has requested uh, coasters for a friend of theirs uh, similar to the colours that I used on my cafe tables. So I'm going to use a similar colour scheme, not exactly the same, I am going to change it up a little bit um, because I've discovered a really cool colour combination as I was picking through colours. And I'm going to show you what those are now. So the colors I have chosen for today's pour are all this little piggy pigments and a gold cell activator. So for my first one I have this little piggy constellation, really nice bluish purple. I have this little piggy sapphire which is a gorgeous deep dark blue. This is one of my favorite piggies. Uh, I have TLP Aphrodite mixed with some uh, Matisse Australian Red Violet tube paint and Aphrodite is already a sort of reddish rose gold and then adding that Australian Red Violet paint just gives you this gorgeous deep uh, deep color there. I have this little piggy Athena which is this little piggy's rose gold and I also have this little piggy Latte. So I haven't used Latte yet I've had it for a little while and I haven't used it quite just yet but I think it'll fit really well with this color scheme. And the gold cell activator I'm using is just Matisse Metallic Gold mixed with some uh, Perlex Nox Gold to make it a little bit deeper. And I've got my four inch tiles here. I've taped up the backs like I always do. I do have videos on my channel on how to prepare tiles. The pillow I'm going to use is British Paints Low Sheen Interior in white. And I'm going to be doing these as a swipe. So I'm just going to get the lid off my bottle and we can begin. So let's have a look at the consistency of our white pillow here. Absolutely perfect. So the consistency you want for your pillow for both blooms and swipes should be between five and six seconds, leaving a trace on the surface. And whenever I'm doing a swipe, I always like to spin my pillow out a little bit first just to even that out so that when I stretch my cells, they don't stretch too far. Now I'm going to be layering my colors onto the pillow and then swiping my cell activator over the top. So let's see, I think we're going to go in the order that I have them down in my little dispenser here. So I've got Constellation first, then Sapphire, then the Aphrodite Australian Red Violet mix. And I'm just putting on a tiny amount and I'm layering them next to each other. That's for my darker colors. Then my lighter ones on top, I'm going to drizzle very lightly so that they form a little bit of contrast on the surface. So because these are smaller tiles, I can't use the full range of colors that were on my tables just because there's not enough room on the tile for them. So after that, I'm going to layer my swipe tool and I'm just going to apply the cell activator to the back and do a swipe. I always keep a piece of paper towel in front of me, in front of my spinner, so that I can wipe my swipe tool straight afterwards so nothing's drying on there and it's nice and clean ready for the next one. Now when you do a swipe, you can do two things. You can spin your swipe out straight away or you can wait for the cells to develop. You'll get two different results depending on which one you do. If you spin straight away, your cells are going to remain smaller and they're not going to stretch as much. If you wait a little bit longer, you're going to get bigger, more open cells. Now, one thing that I forgot, and it's going to change how I do this pour, is that if you are swiping or using bigger particle size pigments, like the TLP Sapphire, over a white base, I'm going to get flocculation. And that is what we call in the bloom world, flocculation is where you can see the individual particles of pigment in the pore. So I'm going to spin this out and I'm going to show you what I mean. And it's not a desired result. I do not want that to happen. Uh, so what that will mean is I need to include a tube paint in my mixture. So that will most likely be something like Matisse Midnight Blue. That's a nice deep dark blue. And I do have some mixed up. And I'm going to put that just as the bottom layer so that I don't get this breaking up of the paint. Uh, whenever you're using pigments, Having a dark color underneath um, is something I always recommend. Uh, you should always have at least one tube paint 
but I do like to have a darker color underneath and sometimes I'll just use black as I find that the pigments look far better on black than they do on white. Now normally I would tilt the center just until that moves but in this case I'm going to move my tile slightly off center. I want all of my design to move this way and get rid of that breaking up pigment. By moving it slightly off center when we spin all of the paint is going to move that way rather than just the center. So if you find that your middle cells are warping as you're spinning and you've moved the center weight of mass off that could be why. So by moving the entire tile you're going to move the entire mass of paint across the entire tile rather than just that middle mound. Uh, you do need to be a bit more careful and slower when you spin if you move your tile off center because it can be very prone to flying off. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tilting my spinner towards me and watching the center for movement and when I can see that that center is no longer moving I know that I've got enough paint off my tile. So this is our first tile and the first one is always a tester to indicate whether you're going to have a successful pour or not. So I really like the color scheme. I think that's turning out really lovely. I can see all of those individual colors in there and I'm going to let this one dry, but we are going to add the midnight blue in so that we decrease our chances of having that flocculation occur. So I will just grab a stir stick. And I have this Midnight Blue mixed up. This is Matisse Midnight Blue. And this is just mixed into my pouring medium as well. And this is an incredibly deep dark blue. Okay, it's almost black. Uh, I could use Payne's Grey here as well. I don't have any of that mixed up. So I'll just use the Midnight Blue for now and see how we go. So let's pour our pillow. And this is a process I do all the time. And I've probably got a bit too much pillow there. I'm just going to pour that back into my bottle. And the other thing I do when I'm doing flights, whoops, tilting paint everywhere. And that's going to fly off as soon as I start to spin it. Uh, the other thing I do when I'm pouring is forget exactly what I was going to say. Oh, uh, that's right. So when I'm pouring, I'm always looking for colors that I could add or remove. So if I notice certain colors are getting lost or they're not showing up in the pour, I'll remove them. Like I, I just won't let them be wasted on the canvas because there's no point putting colors on there if you're not going to be able to see them. So this time let's go with the midnight blue first. And then we'll do the exact same layering as before with our constellation. Sapphire. the Aphrodite and Australian Red Violet, Athena, and Latte. Now I do think my paints are a tiny bit thick, so we'll see how this one goes and then I may thin them out a little bit. Just apply my cell activator to my swipe tool and go for a nice swipe. Okay, this is looking a little bit better, I can tell already, because I can't see that flocculation like I did straight away with the last one. Now, when I uh, poured that pillow before, you noticed I tilted it back into the bottle and got rid of some of that. Uh, that meant that there's more paint down one side of the tile than the other. So to counteract that, I put the swipe at the opposite corner where there's more paint. So when I spread that out, it's going to even everything out nicely. Okay, so I'm just letting those cells develop a little bit. We're going to give that a nice big spin. And that's already much better. Having that darker color underneath, while I can still see a little bit of flocculation towards the end of the pore where the paint was getting quite thin and not necessarily enough of that paint underneath. Um, but it's nowhere near as bad as what it was. So I'm just moving the center off, off center so I can make sure that that's going to dry nice and flat. That one's done. So adding the midnight blue 
has also given me an extra color in here. We didn't use any light purple anywhere in this pour, but I do have that light purple at the bottom there. So right at the top where my hand is, you can see the latte on top. We can see that Australian red violet. We can see sapphire. Constellation is in there as well. And I can see little streaks of Athena. So that's the best part about doing swipes is you do get a mixture of everything in the pour. And I was going to include this little piggy emerald in this pour, um, but I just don't have the room, the real estate on the tiles to do that. Uh, so the next tile I'm going to do, I'm actually going to try a bloom on this one, but I'm going to do a corner bloom. So I'm going to put the paint in one corner and blow my bloom across and see if that's going to give me, or we'll see what kind of result that's going to give me. I'm going to start it from this corner here and just in a little bit from the edge. That way when I'm adding my paints, they're not going to fall straight off the edge because by adding more volume to the surface, your paints are naturally going to push the pillow outwards. And these ones I am going to layer on top of one another. My Athena needs to be thinned down a touch and I think Latte also needs to be thinned down a touch. So to thin these down, I'm just using water. My pigments have sat for quite a little while. I haven't used Athena since I did my tables and that was back in December. So adding the gloss varnish and water to it uh, might make it a little bit gloopy. So just adding water is going to thin that out without causing everything to thicken up like it does when you add the varnish to it. Latte is our last color. I'm going to put my cell activator straight on and blow this out, but I'm only going to try and blow forwards um, and get some really nice elongated petals. So this is where it becomes really apparent um, with the different particle sizes in the little piggies and any pigment for that matter. And this is why I don't like using dark pigments over a white background. I'll always use them over dark if they're darker pigments because you tend to see them and it just looks like everything's breaking up. So in this case, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see little individual dots of uh, pigment particles. The colors I have chosen, generally the deeper the color of the pigment, the bigger the particle size is and the more noticeable it will be when it's blown out. So I really, if we uh, go by what, what we teach our um, students, I should be using one paint for every two piggies I've got. So here I've got uh, five piggies, so I should be using at least two or three paints uh, in between. I'm not doing that because I don't like to follow the rules. <laughs> So I'm going to move my tile off center. And what I want to do is move all of this this way. So we spread out our cell design and not so much the broken up parts. Although I do quite like this. I might try this um, variation of the technique with a different color scheme or a different pillow. Just wanted to see how it would look with this color scheme. Now, like always, if you're moving your tile off center, make sure you're not spinning too hard because you will lose the entire part. Let's see how this one looks. I don't mind it. It's not too bad. I think it would look much better um, with some extra colored paints in there but it's quite soft and gentle now uh, I don't know if you can see on camera there's a couple of little dots in my paint that would just be from uh, the paints having sat for too long and when I've remixed them I haven't in mixed them uh, back into each other fully so if you are noticing that you're getting little dots in your paint 
try mixing them a bit longer use something like the piggy blender uh, that looks like this it's just like a sort of like a coffee frother you could use a cheap coffee frother but the piggy blender is much more powerful um, you get that from fluid art co and by using that it will break up all of those little clumps of pigment you won't get those spots in your artwork so let's try another one of those corner blooms And again, with this, I like to thin out my pillow just a little bit first by spinning it out. Activator on. I think the mistake I made before was I put too much cell activator on in the one spot and I didn't spread it around too much. So my cells didn't quite develop as quickly as I like them to. This one, I did blow more of that blue out. So I don't have as much of that pigment uh, showing over the base, which is great. This one, I think I'm just going to spin whoop, like normal, but I've got to make sure it's centered. And if you do have big chunks of cell activator like I do at the bottom there, that will even itself out and thin down slightly uh, as the pigments settle and as the pore settles. So it's really interesting. So what I'm seeing with this now is not only the individual tiny particles of um, sapphire and the other pigments I've used, um, I'm also noticing that I've got almost like bubbles coming up from the base of the pillow paint, but I know that there are no bubbles in this pillow paint because my swipes don't have it. So something I'm doing with my blowing out of the bloom is causing almost like little dots. It's just very delicate little dots. I don't hate them, but I don't know what's causing them. So it's a really interesting reaction to have. I think that's a little bit of a better result. I can still see those little specks of pigment, but they are super sparkly, so I'm not going to complain. All right, so what I will do is I will do two more swipes and two more blooms. So I make two sets of four coasters like I always do, and that'll complete this set. So if you've liked this color combination, I'll go through it again. We've got Constellation, Sapphire, Aphrodite mixed with um, Australian Red Violet, Athena, Latte, Matisse Midnight Blue, and Matisse Metallic Gold mixed with Perlex Nox Gold for the cell activator. As usual guys, if you've liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!